This is an example of the first order transients game in Circuit Tutor at level three. So we'll go into that game. And this is going to be a problem uh, with an inductor. So we'll assume we've already uh, done the introductory video. So let's do a hard problem. So this problem is going to feature a dependent source, which is a little bit different than the uh, problems on the previous levels. And it's also just a little bit more uh, complicated. Uh, we do notice that we have an inductor in addition to all these sources and resistors. So as always, the switch is going to induce a transient uh, waveform that we need to find. And so we're going to have to analyze this at successive instants of time. So we'll begin by analyzing this at 0 minus, which is just before the switch is opened in this case. And it'll give us the instructions to do that. First, we have to reconfigure the circuit then perhaps simplify it, and then analyze and solve. OK, so let's reconfigure the circuit. And again, in this mode, the only thing we're going to do is to change the switch to the appropriate thing. So in this case, um, because it's before that switch is open, since it's 0 minus, that means that this is going to be a short circuit at this instant. And secondly, uh, because we can assume that we're in steady state at t equals 0 minus, because that switch will have been in that same position for a long time, therefore the inductor is going to be acting like a short circuit. And it already has a SOT variable, so we don't need to uh, create that as you do in some of the level 2 problems. OK, so that's all we need to do then to reconfigure. Remember, you're not allowed to simplify in this mode, so we just exit this mode of the circuit editor. And now um, it probably would be a good idea. I mean, we could go straight into analysis and perhaps do a nodal or mesh analysis or something like that. But I think we can probably save ourselves some work by uh, taking advantage of some simplification first. Let's go into the circuit editor. And first of all, um, a minor thing is we could add these two resistors in series. So that would give us a 7 ohm in place of the 6 ohm and the 1 ohm, changing the other one to a short. We'll check that combination. OK, and then looking at the rest of this, um, we might notice that it's possible to do a source transformation here on this end of the circuit, which would then allow some further simplification. So why don't we go ahead and do that, since we are in a, a mode that allows source transformations. So let's change this into a voltage source. And that'll be the uh, 6 amps times 1 ohm is 6 volts. And then I'll have to move the resistor over here. So I'll delete that and drag the resistor over there and delete these extra dangling shorts to clean it up. And we'll check that source transformation. That was correct. Um, now we have two voltage sources in series, which can be simplified into a single voltage source. And <clears throat> notice that they have opposite polarities. It's kind of like, uh, well, this one makes the current uh, go uh, from high to low, so it would tend to make it go clockwise, whereas this one would tend to make it do the opposite. So those are opposing. Also, they're connected plus to plus. So we subtract the values, and that will give us a 5 volt source here. And then this one becomes uh, 0 volts, to, so the other one can assume all the voltage. And that becomes a short circuit. So we'll check that combination. And that is correct. And continuing on the same vein, we might do another source transformation, since that will give us uh, two resistors in parallel. So let's move this over here and change it to a current source. and. That will be 5 volts divided by 1 ohm, so that's going to be 1 to 5 amps. And then we'll move the 1 ohm over back in parallel and add some more wires to connect that properly. And we'll check that source transformation. And that is correct. And then we can combine the 7 ohm in parallel with the 1 ohm, since those are now connected to the same two nodes. And the product over the sum there will be 7 times 1 divided by 8, so 7 eighths or 0.875 ohms there. And then the other resistor, of course, has to be deleted since they're in parallel. And we'll check that combination. And then maybe we can just compress that a little bit. Um, and that's basically um, all we can do here. These resistors can't be combined in parallel because um, they are, uh, one of them has a SOT current. Um, so that will not not work. So basically, we've simplified as much as we can, but we are now down to a single node pair circuit, which is, remember, the holy grail of circuit analysis. So that's basically um, 
as far as we can go due to the dependent source. So now, um, because we do have a single node pair, that will simplify our analysis. We don't have to do a fancy mesh or nodal analysis. So let's just do single node pair. And we'll start out by writing a KCL equation for that upper node, the non-reference node. And we're going to have currents through two resistors. So we'll need uh, two of those terms there. And then we have the dependent current source, which is going to be this type. It's a current dependent uh, current source. And then finally, an independent uh, current source. And then that's equal to zero. So that will be V1 uh, divided by uh, 7 for the first current. And then another V1 divided by the 0 0.875. And then we have the 4IX, which is pointed out of the upper nodes. So that's going to have a plus sign there. And likewise, the 5 amps, I'm adding currents here everywhere that are leaving the upper node, so that's also leaving, so that'll have a plus sign. And I always have to pay a lot of attention to polarity. And that should be correct. So we'll check that, and that is correct. Then because it's a dependent source, we do have a control variable. We need to write an equation for that. So we'll select the control variable equation. And that's ix equals, and that's going to be just an Ohm's Law type of equation. So fill that in with an x there and that will be v1 uh, divided by the 7 ohms and again that was always have to check on ohm's law of course the polarity but that was indeed a, a positive polarity and finally we need an expression for the inductor current which is actually just the negative of ix as you can see because they're pointing opposite to each other of course this ground is just indicating the choice reference node uh, it's not a path where you can conduct current um, so let's do that uh, SOT branch uh, current. And here it's uh, notifying us very importantly that we have two sets of terms we can use in the palette. Um, and if you look at these terms, well, we want to say IL equals something, but then these are all for a current divider. We can't use a current divider if we have more than one current source, and we can't combine an independent and a dependent current source. Um, so basically we cannot use a current divider uh, formula here and so we'll go look in the other set of terms here to find what we need which is just the uh, Ohm's law type of relationship and again that's going to be a, a negative sign because this is now um, basically uh, active type of sign convention here so that's going to be negative v1 over 7 and again that's just the negative of ix ix remember had a positive v1 over 7 and since they're uh, this one's pointing the opposite direction of ix, that's why we have the minus sign. Um, okay, so that was, oh, I put in the wrong, I'm sorry, I put in the wrong value of the resistance there, that was 7 ohms. I just think I tipped, hit the wrong key there. Okay. Okay, um, and so we've written all the equations. So now we need to uh, enter a numerical value. So basically, if you plug this into here, we see that that's just going to go in this term. And um, I can, I think, pretty much do this one in my head. So we have 1 7th of V1 and 1 over 7 eighths. Well, that's going to be 8 sevenths when I flip it upside down. So 1 7th plus 8 sevenths is 9 sevenths. And then when I plug this into here, that's going to be 4 sevenths. So 9 sevenths plus 4 sevenths is 13 sevenths. And then we put a negative 5 on the other side. So basically a negative 5 times 7 over 13. I'll just do that on my calculator here. And that will come out to be negative uh, 2.692 uh, for the value of V1. OK, and then finally we need to calculate that SOT variable. So we're just going to divide the uh, v1 this value by 7 and uh, put in a uh, minus sign here so that's going to make it positive so that's going to be after doing that division on the calculator that's 0 0.3846 amperes okay so we've successfully determined the inductor current at 0 minus um, and the reason we need that of course is we need to go know uh, what's going on at zero plus to have an initial condition um, basically when we're solving the differential equation that represents this circuit. And remember 
even though the circuit looks complicated, is still only a first order circuit because there's only one reactive element. So it's always going to be that first order differential equation with constant coefficients. So we already know the form of the solution. Okay, so at zero plus, that's going to be very simple because the inductor, remember, cannot change its current suddenly because V equals L di dt, and if that uh, current changed suddenly, the di dt would be infinite, giving it an infinite voltage, which is not allowed. So therefore, all we have to do is to enter that same value of current at zero plus, which is point, uh, well, I don't need quite that many digits, but uh, that's correct. And next we need to analyze this at t equal to infinity. So let's do that. I mean, you could have done the rth evident first, it doesn't really matter. Um, so it's labeled it now for t equals infinity for our SOT variable, which is this inductor current in this case. And as usual, we have to reconfigure the circuit and then simplify it and solve it. So let's do that. So to reconfigure, as always, um, we want to uh, first change the switch into something more specific. So because that switch opened at t equals zero and we're now way past t equals zero, that's going to be open. So I'm gonna just delete the switch, change it to an open circuit. And uh, then the inductor, because we're at infinity, that means that any transients will have died out. Now, it's remotely possible, I guess, that this could be an unstable circuit since it does have a dependent source um, but circuit tutor is really not designed to give you problems like that because it would be uh, rather difficult to, uh, to solve. So therefore, um, it is going to be stable, actually, and we'll find that out by uh, eventually computing the value of our thevenant. Uh, since that's going to be positive, it'll be stable. Okay, so um, that means that the inductor will be in steady state at infinity, and therefore we can change it to a short circuit because, again, V equals L D I D T and Nothing can change in steady state, so di dt will be zero, as will the voltage, which means it's a short circuit. Okay, so we re reconfigure that, and that's all we're allowed to do. We're not allowed to simplify, even though we've got a dangling resistor here. So now we can go back into the simplification mode to try to make this a little bit simpler. And first of all, let's just get rid of that dusky uh, dangling resistor because we know it, it can't carry any uh, current, being that current would have nowhere to go. Okay, and now um, we can actually make an observation here. If you remember some of the things we learned in the last section of that uh, introductory tutorial on DC superposition, it talked about redundant uh, elements. And remember that a current source fixes the current through it, which therefore means that the current through this source is fixed, which makes that voltage source basically redundant. As long as we don't care about the voltage across this current source, this one really isn't going to affect the rest of the circuit because that current's going to go through it no matter what its voltage is. And the voltage across the current source will simply adjust itself to compensate for that one volt. So we may as well just change that to a short circuit and that'll actually simplify the circuit a little bit. And this explains that that was actually a correct uh, thing to do. Okay, um, and the last thing we could do probably is just to combine the 6 and the 1 ohm again. So I'm going to make that the 7 ohm and change this to a short. That'll clean it up a little bit more. And that's actually good because now we have a single node pair circuit again, which is easier to analyze than say if we had to do a full-blown uh, mesh analysis or something of that nature or nodal analysis. But basically we're going to do a nodal analysis, but it's just the single pair nodes, it's a lot easier because there's... Um, the algebra is much simpler than if you have simultaneous equations. So basically we're done with that. And since it is a single node pair, that's the holy grail or one of the holy grails of uh, circuit analysis. So I will write a KCL equation here. I can't use a current divider because there's two current sources, one of which is a dependent source. So um, unfortunately it does not simplify to a current divider, but it's still fairly simple. So I now have uh, two currents. I'm gonna add all these currents that are leaving the upper node to go to the uh, reference node. So there'll be two currents there um, through resistors, which I cannot combine simply because uh, one of them has a control variable for the dependent source. And then we have the dependent source current here, and then we have the independent source current there. So we need uh, one of everything basically, and uh, well, except for this one. 
and that's equal to zero. And so that will be V1 or seven ohms. It's gonna be that first current through the seven ohm resistor. And the other seven ohm resistor, of course, will have a similar current. And remember, we're not allowed to combine those terms in circuit tutor, just because of the way the program works. Um, and then we have uh, plus four IX. And remember, that's gonna be a plus sign because that current is in fact pointing out of the top node and we're adding currents that leave that node. And the same thing for the six amp. But we always have to check those polarities because it's entirely possible for them to be negative. But because they point out, those are positive. Okay, then we also need a control variable equation because there's a dependent source. So we'll write the equation for IX, which is similar to what we did before. So IX is simply V1 divided by the seven ohms. Again, that's gonna be a passive sign convention, so that has a plus sign. Always wanna check the polarity on an Ohm's law equation. And finally, we need a uh, SOT variable, which is our current here, the IL of infinity. So that'll be a SOT branch current. And again, it reminds us about using those different terms, the palettes. If you didn't remember that, then you might be at a loss to find the right thing. So very important to pay attention to that when it's there. Okay, so IL of infinity is equal to, none of these are gonna work because this is not a simple current divider given the dependent source. So we have to go and instead do it this way. And that will be uh, V1 divided by seven ohms. However, if you're paying attention again, you will remember that there's always that polarity issue. And here, because this current points opposite to that, it's gonna to have to have a negative sign. That's actually an active sign convention for that current. Okay, so we check that, that is correct. And that's all the equations. So now um, we need to once again solve this equation, but since we don't have any simultaneous equations, that's pretty easy. So we have one seventh plus one seventh, and then four IX will again give us another four sevenths. So four plus one plus one is uh, uh, six sevenths, and then we multiply that times uh, the uh, negative six on the other side, and that will give us a uh, negative uh, seven after that cancels out. So we just have a negative seven volts. And then we just need to compute the IL of infinity, and that's just that uh, negative seven divided by seven with a minus sign. So that will just give us the uh, one ampere. And we have finished computing IL at infinity. So the last step of the problem then is to find our TH. And that's the one that's gonna be a little trickier when we have a dependent source present, as I'll show you. Okay, so the basic steps are the same. We have to reconfigure the circuit, then simplify it and write equations. But in this case, we're just, well, in this case, we're, we may not really need equations, but actually we will in this case, as I'll show you. Sometimes you need equations, sometimes you don't. So let's reconfigure. And first of all, we'll deal with the switch. Um, since this is T greater than zero, that switch is gonna be open. So we select it and we hit the delete key to get rid of it. And then the um, inductor now, now normally you'd like to look out from the inductor to find the value of R Thevenin after we kill the independent sources, which I haven't done yet. Actually, let's go back and do that just um, to get rid of that. So that we can do source killing in this mode um, so we can turn that voltage source off, and it's redundant anyway. Um, and then we open that up because we need to set that to zero amps. So we can just basically delete that source. But the one thing we cannot do is to delete that dependent source. That would be an error if we did that. So that's not deletable because it's not an independent source. We only kill the independent sources. Now, as I said, um, we basically want to look out from this, but when there's a dependent source present, it's not that simple um, because um, we have to use a test source in order to calculate that. Um, so there's no way to do that with resistive simplification because this is not a resistor. So basically we need to replace this by a source. Um, I'm just going to, given the nature of this problem, I think it's probably easier to make that a current source and this is much like hooking a multimeter to the terminals of the inductor after removing the inductor. Um, so I'm gonna force a current and measure a voltage basically. And I'm just, I can pick whatever current I want. So I'll make it one amp to keep the math easy. And then I'll add a SOT voltage here. 
um, with a positive sign, and I want this to be active sign dimension. So uh, I want the positive sign on the um, left. Okay, because if I force the current into something else, then that's going to produce a positive voltage here. So that will give me the correct sign convention for the Thevenin resistance. Notice it's already given it a name of VS uh, since it's the source. It just automatically does that for us. Okay, so that's how we take care of the inductor in this case, is we have to use a test source to find the Thevenin equivalent resistance. And that's true anytime you have a dependent source. Okay, so we're finished reconfiguring that. Again, we can't do simplification in this mode. Uh, but we can go back in, in the simplification mode to do that, so let's do that. First of all, we notice that the 1 ohm resistor is clearly dangling. It's only connected on one end, so we can get rid of that since it can't have any current or voltage. And then we might also um, go ahead and combine those two resistors in series, so that'll be a 7 ohm there. Now. If you had really paid attention about that uh, current splitability thing, you might have said, oh, both of the currents that are connected to this node with this resistor are fixed by current sources. Therefore, ordinarily, this would be what we call current splittable. But in fact, in this case, it's actually not, because the current sources that cause current splittability cannot have a SOT voltage. If they do, then changing this to a short would actually change that SOT voltage. So we're not allowed to do that if you noticed if you didn't notice that that uh, uh, could be done, then probably just as well here because it's not going to work because of that SOT voltage. If there's a SOT voltage on any of those current sources, you cannot change that to a short like you normally could if it were just uh, lacking a SOT voltage. So basically, um, we've done what we can do here. So we're done editing. And now, you notice we don't have the Holy Grail. We don't have a single node pair. Um, we have uh, one, uh, two, three nodes. And also we have, um, well, three meshes total. So we don't have a single mesh pair either. And therefore, we're going to have to use a different method. Um, since we have a couple of current sources, it's probably easiest to use mesh analysis. So I'm going to pick that. And it gives us some instructions there, uh, which you've probably seen before. So um, we're going to have some current constraints for sure because we have two current sources. And that'll actually make it easier. So first let's do the one for the one amp source. And we have to use this selector that's in the program now um, to pick which one we're doing it for. And it highlights it green. And we'll click done there. And so now um, we see that I, the one amp is just going to be the value of I1 because that's the only non-reference uh, current mesh current going through it. We've picked the outer mesh here as our reference mesh so that the outer mesh current, which would normally go counterclockwise, has been chosen to be zero. Um, the circuit tutor at the moment does that by default. In the future, maybe it'll allow you to pick that, but right now it's doing that by default. Okay, so that would be I1 would simply e be equal to one amp because it's going in the same direction as the one amp source. So that's very simple. And then for the other current source, the 4IX current source, where 4 is a dimensionless gain, um, that's just the value of I2. So that's also quite simple. So I2 is just going to be equal to that 4IX, which is the value of that current source. So we set I2 equal to 4IX. And then we need the control variable of the dependent source. So we have to do a control variable equation. And that control variable is ix. So ix now, we see that that's equal to the negative of i1 because they point, this one was going clockwise, that one's going counterclockwise. So they're opposite to each other. And so that'll be ix equal to negative i1. And finally, we need the um, SOT uh, voltage across the current source, which is what we're after to basically find the uh, Thevenin resistance. And so Vs is going to be equal to, well, we're going to have to do um, a uh, 
either brown this mesh basically to find that. So the voltage drops that are going to contribute to IS are first of all the voltage drop across this 7 ohm with the plus on the left and the negative on the right to be the same polarity there. Um, so that's going to be 1 amp times 7 ohms or actually we can just call it I1 times 7 ohms. And then the second one is going to be I1 minus I2 times 7 ohms here. Uh, because that's the net current going down there. And again, that's going to make a plus here and a minus here, which would be consistent again with the direction of Vs. So that's the expression that's back to the other side of Vs. So that will be the uh, SOT variable equation. And that's all the equations we need. So now um, it's going to ask us to simplify those, and that's really easy here. So I1 is just equal to 1. So we just put a coefficient of 1 there and a value of 1 there. The second equation just says I2 with a coefficient of 1 is equal to 4IX. So that means we're going to, uh, since it's on this left side of the equation, it'll be a minus 4IX here. Um, the third equation basically says IX plus I1 is 0. So I have a coefficient of 1 there and a coefficient of 1 there, and the right side is 0. Um, so we'll check that, and that is correct. And then we just have to copy that into the matrix, and there is a button, of course, to do that. So that just puts it into the matrix form, which we don't really probably need a matrix here, but we're just making it anyway. And now we have to solve these uh, algebraically. Well. In fact, this is actually, I think, pretty easy. If we look at these equations, um, I1, first of all, we already know is 1 amp, so we can just put that in directly. And I2, well, it's 4IX, which means negative 4I1, and that's just negative 4 amps. So in reality here, these equations are very trivial to solve um, because of all those constraints that we have. So um, we'll just check that, and that was correct. And finally, we just need to use the SOT variable equation, um, this equation here, and that's I1 times 7, so that's just 1 times 7, or 7, and then we have uh, I1 minus the uh, IX, which is, I'm sorry, I1 minus I2, I mean, which is, uh, that's going to be 5, basically, uh, times the other 7, so that's going to be 35. So we're going to have a total of 42 volts there. And uh, the last step then, since we've solved the, the mesh analysis, is to simply enter the value of the Thevenin resistance. And remember, that's going to be the voltage divided by the test current. So our voltage is the 42 volts divided by the 1 amp. That's going to give us 42 ohms. So it's just the same way a multimeter would find test current. It probably wouldn't use quite such a large current, but it would work on the same principle. So 42 ohms is correct for our Thevenin here. And now we have basically all the parameters for this circuit um, that we need to find the transient expression. So it's put us into the mode here where we're going to find the final transient expression. And so we just have to select the appropriate type of equation, which is going to be transient current in this case. And again, you're going to want to know the form of this uh, uh, equation, um, but it's giving to you in this case. Um, but that might not be provided on an exam, so you probably want to know that. Um, so this term is the one that's going to survive, remember, at t equals infinity, because as t goes to infinity, this becomes e to the negative infinity, which is zero, and this term goes away. So basically the current we evaluated at infinity is one amp. That's going to have to be the value that goes there. And then at t equal to zero, where we also, or zero plus to be more specific, uh, where we also evaluated that current, um, this is the exponential is just e to the zero, so that's going to be one. So this plus this is equal to 0 0.3846. And therefore, this is going to be equal to 0 0.3846 uh, minus one. And if I just uh, do that on my calculator, that's going to be negative 0 0.6154. And uh, then we need to put in the time constant. So that's always going to be L over R Thevenin for an RL circuit. And so that's going to be 8 divided by 42. And just 
Punching that on my calculator, that's going to be 0 0.190 seconds. And now I just have to check that. And it is correct. So that basically finishes it. I just say no more equations. <laughs> I will just, uh, for completeness here, view the um, example solution to this problem. Um, it shows the general uh, procedure here that you can follow. And again, um, if you want to just get some ideas on how to solve these problems efficiently, you can sometimes look at this. It might um, do it a little bit differently than you did it. But uh, in either case, um, you did get the right answer, so that's fine. Um, but this one's a little bit complicated, so it's taken a while to draw all of that. I'll just wait for a moment there. Okay. Um, and so there's the analysis at zero minus and shows it simplifying um, the circuit, doing the source transformations and combining voltage sources much like we did. Um, and then it just lays it out a little bit differently, but it's the same basic idea, another source transformation and doing the uh, single node pair analysis here. Um, then it does the analysis at D equals infinity and then the uh, switch is open. Uh, that resistor is dangling. Other resistors are combined. Again, that, that voltage source is redundant, so it's single mode pair once again, and we get that analysis. And then our Thevenin, again, just basically the same thing that we did. Um, it, in this case, it actually used a test voltage source rather than a test current source. Um, and let's see, it did mesh analysis, I guess. Um, as you can see, this one might have been a little bit more complicated um, than the way we did it, so I think it might have been actually better to use a current source. So. In any case, that shows the complete solution of the problem. So that concludes the uh, example. Thank you.